<laughs> Hello, young gentlemen. I have not talked to anybody in a long time alone for centuries. So I have something very important to ask of you. Hello everybody, welcome back to another Minor Man Douglas video. By the end of this video, you will have basic, fully fledged, interactive dialogue in your favorite NPC in housing. So without further ado, let's just dive right in. Now for this tutorial, there is little to no setup at all needed. No rank or housing plus. You can even have a basic 31 by 31 plot. All you need is one single NPC and one stat slot open. If you do slash limits, you can see how many stats you can have. It doesn't show how much you currently have. And throughout this video, I will be using housing editor, but that is not required, just recommended, and it makes it easier for me to show you what you need to make NPC dialogue. Now let's get right on to the coding. Now for this method, you're going to have to have your conditionals backwards in the way you might think. Now let me explain. Now out of these two NPCs, one of them is a good old nice bandit, and the other is a sussy Among Us bandit. I can't believe I just said Among Us in 2023. But anyway, if I right click this one, it'll do what it's supposed to do, but it'll just do it all at once, and that is not at all what we want. We want it to be able to click it and make it interactive. So here's what's supposed to happen. We right click it once. He says, I'm going to rob you, Minor Man Douglas. Right click it again. Another dialogue. Right click it again. It gives me an item. Now this item was in my original Aqua Tycoon. I did not release the original Aqua Tycoon to anybody except a few close admins. So you probably won't recognize this, but you know, it's Jack, which is a really good housing creator. And last thing before we move on to the coding itself, yes, I made a whole entire NPC. I spent like 10 minutes on it just to show you how it's not supposed to work. This is Housing Editor by Amadufus. It's super easy to install, I have an installation guide, but it's pretty self-explanatory. So if we go to Actions, I'm going to create a new action. So what we want to do is we want to have multiple pieces of dialogue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab myself the text and make my first piece of dialogue. I created my chat message then for the condition you want to have a player stat requirement so my NPC is called a robber so I'm gonna do robber NPC num I highly highly recommend doing no capital letters for stats occasionally you can run into some issues and then you want to do equal to now normally you would want to do equal to but this is our first chat message so we're going to do less than or equal to that way if there's some sort of issue in your house and some reason your stat is negative 70 it'll work so if it's less than or equal to zero it's going to send a chat message hello player name with the npc in yellow then the name in bandit and make sure to do and r and then the colon that way the message itself is just white just like in hypixel skyblock then i'm going to right click and duplicate this and do the same thing except do equal to 1. Now before I recreate the NPC that I showed you before, I have to explain. Now to you, you probably put 0 here, 1 here, and 2 here. But remember that problemic, problemic, problem NPC that I showed earlier? Well, that's because it was in order. So you need to have to do it backwards. So from 2, 1, then 0. Now, if you are in game, the far left conditional is going to be the higher number, and the far right is going to be the lower number. Again, backwards. Unless you're Arabic. So now it's time for the good stuff. But before I show you the good stuff, make sure to drop a like and subscribe, because only a small percentage of you are subscribed if you want to see more awesome and even more advanced tutorials. So for my first dialogue, for, at the bottom, I did I am going to rob you and in the placeholder for the player but housing editor has this really cool placeholder thing where you can basically do player.name okay and it adds it in now because of a screen size and how much you've zoomed in sometimes the text does glitch out like that but all you have to do to fix that is just zoom out more and depending on your screen size it can become blurry so just either deal with it or zoom out it will always show a preview at the top, so don't worry about not seeing it. Now, to make it more immersive, 
I'm gonna add a special message basically saying you have to click the NPC to continue. This is important because a player, when they join your house, they may just think it's a simple NPC, you don't do anything to it. And then most people won't even end up grabbing the item that you want them to grab, and then they'll, they won't know what to do, and then they'll give up and leave the house. Nobody wants that. I'm gonna rob you, percent player name, and then click NPC to continue. But that is not all you have to do. Then we're gonna change the stat. Robber NPC Gnome. And you could add one, but just to be safe, I'll always set it to a number. And it's gonna be by default zero, and it's gonna set to one. That way, when they click it again, it'll trigger this one. And then it's gonna play a sound. Now for me, it's a man, so I'm gonna be playing villager idle at a pitch of 0 0.8, which is less than one, which means it's gonna be deeper. Now for the next one, if in the previous conditional, we set it as one, so in the next one, if robber NPC number, or whatever your NPC's name is, NPC num, is equal to one, it's gonna send your next chat message, and then your click NPC to continue. And this time, since it's if the NPC number is equal to one, we're gonna set it to two, and then play whatever sound you chose to play. For me, it's villager idle at 0 0.8 pitch. Now, I did two messages for an immersive experience, but it's trying to give an artifact, which in my case is the Jack UW mineral cluster. So for this, I'm gonna do and seven and M, which M and M is strike through. So if I type a letter, it'll be strike through. But if I do a dash, it'll just be a dash. And what I usually do is do a dash space dash for 15. So one, two, three, four, 14, 15. And housing editor does not properly render the dashes when you do it like that, but it looks much better in game. Then for the next line, I'm gonna do and E. Quest item received. Then I'm gonna duplicate the first line and just add it to the second one. That way there's a line that ends it. And there's a good amount of the housing community that uses things like patcher and things that basically, if a message is the exact same as a different message, it says like a two to the side. So to prevent your message from getting messed up, put an and r at the very end of the message. And do the same for the, and it is optional, but you can do the same for the click NPC to continues, but I personally think those are fine. Then I'm gonna do the normal stat change, but this time it's gonna set it to three, and then a custom item. Now, I'm not going to fully customize this in Housing Editor, but you can feel free to do that. That way, when importing it into Minecraft, it makes it 20 times easier. And then I'm going to leave Allow Multiple off, and I'm going to play a sound or pick up. Kind of flows better with it. And now, I'm going to add one more conditional. Basically, they've already claimed the item, they've already done everything, but what if they want to click the NPC again? Now, I don't want there just to be nothing that the NPC says, so I'm going to add basically like an idle chat basically every single time they click the NPC from now on it'll say this exact chat now if you want to make it more advanced you could add like a function link to this where basically it picks a random message between like five messages and it'll say basically hey quit touching me or and it'll pick another random one like why are you still here for the sake of this tutorial I'm just gonna do one single chat message so if it equals three since we set it to three in the previous conditional it's gonna send the next chat message and then I'm gonna play my villager idle sound. Now before I import this in game, go ahead and double check your code. Make sure the highest number for the conditions is at the top, the lowest number is at the bottom. Or if you're not using housing editor, make sure the highest number conditional with the highest number condition is at the left and the lowest is on the right, again backwards. You do not want it to turn out like the sus NPC at the beginning of the video. Now in Housing Editor, once you're ready to import it, give it a title, something basic for the description. I usually leave mine on public because they can see your code and it's more, you know, open-ended. And you have to save the action and then copy ID and I'll see you back in game. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get another NPC, put it right here and paste the action ID. I'm in the edit actions page and import. Well, I gotta do it by hand.
Now this guy, I put a handy little helmet on it, so, you know, big-headed Tyrone over here. Let's see, I'm gonna rob you. Nah, just kidding, bro. Here's an artifact for you to keep. Request item received. I already gave you something, go use it to your advantage. Now just pretend I added that in Housing Editor. Now, I'm a doofus did say he'd be rewriting Housing Editor, so if Housing Editor is buggy, he'll rewrite it eventually. So, congratulations, you've just created your first, or maybe not first, advanced NPC. There is unlimited possibilities to what is possible with NPCs, which is just one of them. If you'd like to see an updated engine in video, make sure to comment down below and join my Discord for Aqua Tycoon sneak peeks. Anyways, I'm gonna get the normal subscribe and like. But see you in the next one. Peace. I'll be posting more updates about Aquatic Tycoon. I have a whole entire channel for my dev updates on my Discord in the description below.